Here is the news at 6. First, the highlights. Lagos State Task Force removes shanties and illegal structures on Lekki Axis. Federal government clarifies stands on the age limit for NECO and WASC. On the foreign scene, Ukraine's from foreign minister tenders resignation ahead of cabinet reshuffle. In sport, Pa Lifter Onyechi Mark wins Nigeria's first gold medal in ongoing Paris Paralympics sets world record. Now the details, I am Taiwo Barua. The Lagos State Task Force has removed all shanties, makeshift buildings and illegal structures on Nagungia General Road, Lekki. Speaking at the scene of the clearing out exercise, chairman of the agency, Adetaya Kirili, said the occupant of all illegal structures in the area had been warned severally and were served eviction notices two weeks ago, but decided to remain at the location. Akirili said the illegal structures not only deface the well-planned out residential area, but also goes against the physical planning programs of the state government along Lake Yekme Axis. He assured the Goshans that the exercise is going to be continuous as more shanties scattered along other parts of Lekki Axis have been served removal notices, appealing to the occupant to evacuate the shanties and pull down any form of illegal structures in those areas or risk having them forcefully demolished by the agency. In order to continuously improve the quality of education being offered to pupils and students, the Lagos State Government has again reiterated education as a major driver of development in the state. Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Tolani Ali Balogun, stated this during the official presentation of provisional approval letters to private school owners at the Education Resource Center, Ujudu Ikeja. Ali Balogun emphasized that quality education is a social investment and only the sacrifice would empower students and use to achieve a better future. And since the state government cannot do it alone, he appreciated the role of private school owners to the advancement of education in the state. He warned all proprietors and proprietors who had gone through the processes of provisional approval letters of the state government to maintain the integrity of the letter as the state government will not shy away from its responsibility to enforce the rules and regulations guiding quality education. The Association for Fertility and Reproductive Health, AFRI, has called on the National Assembly to ensure speedy passage of the IVF Regulation Act. The association also wants fertility issues to be seen as a disease and be covered by the National Health Insurance Authority, NHIA. Former president of the association and pioneer IVF specialist in Nigeria, Ibrahim Wada, made the call while briefing newsmen in Abuja ahead of the association's forthcoming international conference, explaining that the bill will address issues of quackery and third parties in the IVF practice. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, around 17.5% of the adult population, roughly one in six worldwide, experience infertility, showing the urgent need to increase access to affordable, high-quality fertility care for those in need. The federal government has announced that only buyers with national identification numbers, NIN, will benefit as it commenced the sale of 30,000 metric tons of milled rice to Nigerians at a subsidized rate of 40,000 naira per kilogram, per 50 kilogram bag. Minister, Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, stated this during the flag of ceremony saying the rice intervention we will be sold strictly on a one-person, one-bag basis. Kiari explained that the initiative is part of the federal government's effort to provide subsidized milled rice to help alleviate the ongoing food crisis in the country. One buyer verification, the minister explained that a multidisciplinary government task force 
has been deployed to ensure transparency, broad distribution, and the overall success of the initiative. According to him, beneficiaries will be verified through identification methods such as the NIN and phone numbers to prevent fraudulent individuals from accessing multiple bags at the expense of other citizens. It will be recorded that in July, the Minister of Information, Idris Mohammed, announced the sale of subsidized rice. Now to the rest of the stories, the Federal Ministry of Education has clarified that it has not stopped students who are not up to 18 years from writing the West Africa Senior Certificate Examination, WASC, and the National Examinations Council NECO exams. Minister of State for Education Yusuf Sununu made the clarification in Abuja while fielding questions from journalists at an event to mark the 2024 International Literacy Day. Sununu said the public misconception and misinterpretation of what was said by the Minister of Education is highly disappointing. According to him, the minister was speaking on the 18 years of entry age into tertiary institutions as was practiced in the 6364 system of education. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives Committee on Basic Education has thrown its weight behind the federal government's recent decision to peg the minimum age for candidates sitting for the senior secondary school certificate examination as at 18. Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Basic Education, Mark Husseini, gave the reasons the federal government might not likely reverse the decision. Husseini explained that the policy is meant to ensure that children pursue their education alongside their cognitive, physical development and maturity. The chairman who frowned at the situation where children not older than 12 are being made to seek admission into universities urged the Ministry of Education to develop a framework for proper transition of the policy into full implementation. This, according to Seni, will ensure the student who are already progressing in their senior classes in secondary schools are not left stranded after completion of that level of education. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has issued a warning against the spread of misinformation during electoral process. INEC's National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Sam Olumekum, issued the warning in a statement after a press briefing in Abuja ahead of the Edo State gubernatorial election. Olumekum, who emphasized the critical role the media plays in ensuring the integrity of the upcoming election cautioned that the spread of false information, particularly in the digital age, could lead to public unrest and erode trust in the election result. The Adogibani election is scheduled for Saturday, September 21. In foreign news, Ukraine's foreign minister, Metro Kuleba, has become the latest top official to tender his resignation ahead of major government reshuffle. And this is as another wave of overnight erosion attacks killed at least seven people, including a child. As Ukraine's top diplomat, Kaleba, has been a prominent fixture in President Zelensky's administration and one of the most public facing, especially dealing with overseas officials. His offer to resign comes ahead an expected visit by the President of the United States this month. Former Ambassador to Turkey and Deputy Hyatt of a Presidential Office, Andri Sibiha, has been sworn in as Foreign Minister to replace Kuleba. In sport now, Nigerian power lifter Onyechi Mark has won the gold medal in the women's 61 kilogram power lifting category at the ongoing Paris Paralympics in France. Mark lifted an impressive 150 kilogram. The 23-year-old triumphed defeating China's Qiu Xiajin, who claimed silver with a lift of 140 kilograms, and Mexico's Amelia Perez, who took the bronze medal 
was a lift of 130 kilograms. That's it on the news at 6, but just before we go, maintain adequate distance from the vehicle ahead of you to avoid collision. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X, at Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Legal Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Legal Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that under the Songwulu administration, Loma launched the Lagos State Blue Box Recycling Initiative? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website to end the news. Here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Task Force has removed all shanties, makeshift buildings, and illegal structures on Agumi, a general road, Lekki. The Federal Ministry of Education has clarified that it has not stopped students who are not up to 18 years from right in the West African. Senior School Certificate Examination, WASC, and the National Examinations Council, NECO, exams. We also told you that Ukraine's Foreign Minister, Mitro Kaleba, has become the latest top official to tender his resignation ahead of major government reshuffle. Finally, in sport, Nigerian power lifter Oyechi Mark has won the gold medal. In the women's 61 kilogram power lifting category, at the ongoing Paris Paralympics in France. For contacts with the newsroom, send a message to info at traffic radio 961.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Adewali Ulu Poroku. I am Tayo Barua. Thank you for listening. Good evening.